I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. Today I am going to review my top 10, no, 11 today, my top 11 acrylic painting supplies. First I want to talk about the quality of your supplies. I hear a lot from students that they think they can go with the bargain brands because they're just learning. The problem with this is that bargain brands just do not work the same as quality materials. An example of this would be acrylic paints. I've worked with a lot of them where students brought in low-end low paints and they put down their first layer, dried it completely, put on their second layer, and the first layer pulled completely off the canvas. That's not helping anyone. You're not learning in that case because you're just fighting with bad, bad materials. This brings me to number one on my list of must-have acrylic painting supplies, and that is the canvas. I only use Frederick's canvases, and there's good reason for this. I started off painting using Frederick's canvases years and years ago because that's what the art supply store near me carried. About five years ago, I moved to an area where the local art supply store did not carry Frederick's. So I was using what they carried thinking, it's a canvas, it's all the same, it can't make any difference. It did. I used them for several years before I got just fed up with what was going on with their canvases and switched back to Fredericks. I will never use another canvas again. I know with Fredericks I'm getting quality. It's They're all archival so I know it'll last a lifetime and they've got a huge variety. If I want something that has more tooth to it, they've got it. If I want very, very smooth, they've got it. If I want oil primed linen, they've got I mean anything you want, they make. So there's really no reason for me not to go anywhere else. And now I actually order online when I can't get to a store that has them because it's really not worth using some of those lesser canvases. Number two on my list of must-have supplies is the acrylic paint itself. I use Liquitex Basics and I know you're thinking well you were just talking about using quality and this is a student brand. This is quality. The thing with the student brand is that it doesn't have as many colors available to you but you can generally mix anything that you need so it works very well. The other thing that I really like about these is that they have a fairly matte finish. This works well because of the way that I layer I end up using a white charcoal pencil to draw in whatever subject I'm currently working on versus a regular pencil which will leave pencil lines. The charcoal pencil won't. Not all of the paints will allow for this. The Fred or the Fredericks, the Liquitex Basics does. It's a really, really nice paint to work with. The only time that I'll switch to heavy body is if there's a color that I can't find or if I'm painting with a palette knife or, you know, doing heavier brush strokes. Number three on my list skips to my airbrush paint. I use Createx. I like this paint because the colors come in transparent and opaque and they just work really well for mixing with acrylic paint the way that I do. When I say that I mix acrylic painting with airbrushing, I use my Liquitex Basics for applying traditionally with the brush. My Createx is the only thing that I run through my airbrushes. Number four on my list is a water well. This, you, a lot of people will use glass jars. I prefer these plastic ones because they have ridges at the bottom, so you can scrape your paintbrush along the bottom if, to get more of the paint out of it if you need to. Also, just a quick tip, do not be deceived by the little holes on the edge of these um, water wells, most of them contain that, and the concept is, oh, you can put your paintbrush in there and it holds it, and how awesome, and really that's a great way to ruin your paintbrush, because if your brush is wet, the water is going to run down into the barrel. The barrel, the, there's glue that holds the paintbrushes in there, so when you're constantly soaking water into that barrel, your brush bristles will likely eventually fall out. So when you use your paintbrush, just dab it on your paper towel, dry it off, you know, rinse it off, dry it on your paper towel, and just lay it to the side to dry the rest of the way. Number five on my must-have list of acrylic painting supplies is my brush holder and my paintbrushes. I have several of these that hold all of my acrylic brushes. The canvas brush holders flip over the brushes and roll up for easy storage or if you're taking your paints with you or your paint brushes with you to paint somewhere this will protect the tips of the bristles a lot better than if you just threw them in a box. I can't go over all the individual brushes with you because I have a slight brush addiction and I have way too many and will be here for two days. So what I will do is show you a few of the ones that I really think are important. First are my filberts. I have several of these in different sizes. I use these more than any other brush. They're a synthetic brush and with the pink brushes I'm not as picky about the quality. These are actually a very cheap, I think they're probably on sale, I paid like two or three dollars a piece. They work wonderfully. The other type of brush that you really want are mop brushes. These for acrylic paint I use a softer mop brush than I do for my oils and I always want to have two available to me. The reason for this is when you're using this, this is never for scooping up paint and applying it directly to the canvas. What you're doing is once the paint's already on there and you're working wet into wet, you're lightly letting the tip of the brushes hit the canvas which just softens out the look which gives you almost an airbrush look. That very soft, soft transition from one color to the next. 
The thing is, these also will start picking up paint, or if they're wet from just having been washed, they won't work. These need to be completely, completely dry and as clean as possible to work right. So I have two. The next brush that I really like are my liner brushes. These you want to have very, very long tips on. Those little teeny brushes that you think you're going to do all your detail with because they have teeny, teeny, tiny bristles, those are nearly pointless. What happens is after you've used them a couple times, they're great the first time or two, but after you've used them a couple of times, they're so short that paint is getting down in that barrel and there's no way you can, can prevent that from happening. So once the paint gets into that barrel and it starts to dry, the bristles go from being nice and tight to spread out like this and you're not getting a nice detail. If you want detail, you want a liner brush with a very, very long um, bristled tip on it. Number six on my list of acrylic painting supplies are my airbrushes. For me, these are an absolute must have. I use them for two things. One, for actually painting, for, you know, rays of light and doing certain special effects or shadows and different things. The other is for just spraying water and continuously misting water onto the paint to keep it wet so I have time to blend wet into wet. You can keep your painting wet for hours on end doing this if you continuously miss that fine spray. A lot of people will ask, well, can I use a spray bottle, a normal spritzer for that? No, and the reason for that is that spritzer is going to drop heavy, heavy droplets of water and those droplets are gonna pull paint back off and make an absolute mess of whatever it is you're trying to blend. These give such a, a fine mist that that won't happen. The reason that I have two of these, one has a thicker needle than the other, so it's better for large areas, and the other one has a finer ne needle, which is good for fine detail. One more thing I want to add about the airbrush is that you don't have to invest in a huge airbrush setup if you want to spray just spray water for wet into wet blending. There are kits out there that are single action hobby kits for about $30 or $35. I know Amazon carries some. Those claim that they're good for spraying paint, but that's more for like model car painting. You don't have any control because they're single action. You can't control how thin or thick your line is. So you can't get detail or thicker lines. You have absolutely no control there. But they do work very, very well for just spraying water, for getting a fine mist over everything and keeping it wet. Number seven on my list of supplies is my brush cleaner. This I don't use every single time I paint, maybe every other day. This is the Master's Brush Cleaner. It's a preserver. It will condition your brushes and make them last a lot, lot longer than they would if you didn't use this. It also helps get paint out of clothes. By the way, vodka also works at getting paint out of the clothes, in case you wondered. Number eight on my list are my palettes. I personally prefer a pie tin. I've got two sizes of tins that are wrapped in tin foil. When I'm done, I flip it over and use the other side of the foil, and then I just throw it away for easy cleaning, keeping the pie tin. One other palette type that I like is this Ellipse S Peel Off Paint Palette. This one, you can put your paint in the little well off to the side and do your mixing in the center area, and when the paint is dry, you just peel it off, so it's very, very easy to clean up. Not as easy as my tin foil method, but it's still easy. Number nine on my list of must have supplies are Ot lights. For years, I had used normal floor lights that were paint pointed at my canvases. I thought I was doing a good job until I took the canvases outdoors and realized that the color was nowhere near what I thought it was. The Ot light gives you a natural daylight glow, so you're getting very, very accurate colors as you're working. I have one that I keep clamped to my easel and another floor lamp one. I can't really show you either because I'm using them both for the lighting in this video. Number 10 on my list is the easel. I use a heavyweight floor easel um, that you can't really see because I can't back up my camera any further than this, but it's heavyweight is the point. You'd want to avoid some of the very lightweight, flimsy tripod type easels. And the reason for that is that as you're painting, if you put pressure on your paintbrush, your whole easel and canvas slide backwards or fall over. Go with something that's heavyweight. And there are some tripod easels that are heavier weight, whether they be made of metal or a very heavyweight wood. Just go with something that's heavy so it's not sliding around on you as you work. Last on my list are paper towels. These I'm not as picky about as I am with oil paint. With oil paint, I only like Viva. For acrylic paint, I don't like Viva at all. B Bounty or any, any paper towel, even some of the cheapy one, generic ones work fine for acrylic painting. I have new painting and drawing videos every Wednesday, so make sure you subscribe and follow me on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with my newest work.